This is the brand spanking new iPad Pro. I got the iPad Pro 11 inch model here and the new Magic Keyboard that goes with it. And I got the new Apple Pencil Pro. Is this worth an upgrade? We are going to find out. All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ted. I'm a techie, and we talk about anything and everything tech in this channel. And today, I got the iPad Pro, the new release from Apple. I've got the 11 inch iPad Pro, and this one retails about $999. It starts from $999, and the 13 inch model starts from $1,299, the base version. This is the brand new Apple Pencil Pro. And this one costs about $129. And this is the magic keyboard that goes with the 11 inch iPad Pro. And this one costs about $299. And if you're looking at the keyboard for the 13 inch model, that costs about $345. Okay, and I'll set this up and do some testing. And I'll come back and talk about how it performs, the pros and cons, why you should buy one or why you shouldn't buy one. And let me go ahead and, and do some benchmark testing and come back and look at those numbers. Be right back. Okay, I'm back with the scores, guys. I ran Geekbench, both CPU, GPU, and Apple is selling these devices big on AI and machine learning. So I also ran the Geekbench Core ML benchmarks. That's for machine learning performance. Okay, let's take a look at the scores. The single core scores are now 3,724 versus the previous generation, which is 2,534, which is an amazing 47% performance boost on this iPad, which is just amazing. On the multi core score, I got 13,371 versus 9,622 for the previous version, which is a whopping 39% performance improvement. And talking about the GPU performance, this time I got uh, 53,888 versus the previous generation, 45,135, which is a 19% improvement in the GPU performance. It's not bad at all. And talking about the Core ML benchmarks, now we could run Core ML benchmarks on the CPU, GPU, as well as the neural engine. You know? So uh, on the CPU, the new score is 4,731 versus the older score 3,447, which is 37% improvement. Which kind of aligns with the multi-core performance, you know, almost uh, the multi-core performance was 39% improvement. In the ML workload, it is 37%, which is, you know, amazing. And uh, talking about the GPU, using the GPU for ML, uh, I got a score about 6,839 versus 5,472, which is about 20% uh, performance improvement which kind of aligns with the GPU performance as well. And uh, doing this on the neural engine, uh, I got a score of 9,463 versus the old 7,335, which is about 29% improvement on the, using the neural engine for ML workloads, which is amazing. Okay, now let's talk about who this iPad is for and why you should buy this. Pro model. Unquestionably, the screen, the OLED screen is amazing. So that's one reason uh, to buy this iPad. The screen is gorgeous. If you want an OLED screen, then this is what you need to have. What are the other things? Faster CPU, GPU, and neural engine. Yeah, we saw the scores. Amazing performance improvement in those areas. And also, the selfie camera is in the landscape oriented mode, which everyone likes. And also this version is also capable of uh, 
doing a 4K AirPlay to the Apple TV. So that might be useful for some people who want to stream 4K directly from their iPad to an Apple TV. That's capable now. What are the cons and who should not buy this iPad at all? Yeah, there are a few things. The first thing is there's only one camera now. There used to be two camera, ultra wide camera is dropped from this model. Hey, if you if you want that ultra wide camera and you're used to you know zooming in without losing any image quality, then you won't get this with these generation models. It is better to go to the previous generation model. Okay, the other thing you might not want to buy this is this is a OLED screen and it is prone to screen burning. The OLED technology has gone a long way, but you know the screen burning issue is still there. It depends on what content you're watching. If you are using this iPad for gaming and you got static content everywhere, and you know, and you play games um, hours and hours, the screen burning is going to be an issue. In fact, I've been using an OLED LG 4K 48 inch TV as my monitor for the past two years, two and a half years. It works really great. And I've been using it like more than eight hours every day. It has not given a problem in the past two years. So it might cause a problem in the future, but yeah, I went into it knowing that, hey, OLED, there is a risk of screen burning with OLEDs. Burning is an issue with OLEDs, and that's why Apple has been hesitating to add OLED screens to their laptops. Hmm. We might get OLEDs on the MacBooks too. We need to wait and see. Another thing why you might need to avoid this is this is 200 bucks expensive now. Okay. And uh, if you're choosing the 13 inch version, the base model with 256 storage starts from $1,300, which is going into the laptop MacBook territory. You could very well buy a MacBook Air for that price. MacBook Air comes with 13 inch screen version as well as 15 inch screen version, and it has a better battery performance, 16 hours of battery performance instead of 10 hours. Also, when you start adding the smart keyboard, this is going to get bulkier than the MacBook Air. So MacBook Air would be a better option for some who doesn't need the touch functionality. And if you want the touch functionality, you are an artist, you are a uh, drawing artist, absolutely, you know, this is the best uh, iPad you can get. And you can't do that with, uh, uh, with a uh, MacBook. But for most people, in that money, you know, it is going into that MacBook territory. And for most of the people, MacBook would be a better option and choice. And also in terms of application they can run, there are much more options with a MacBook rather than an iPad. And even the hardware is terrific on these iPads. It's getting better and better and better in terms of hardware. The iPad OS is, is kind of letting it down. There are no apps in the iPad ecosystem to take advantage of the hardware performance in here. That might be coming soon in the AI era, but we are far away from that. But right now, the hardware is an overkill for the apps. If you are interested in purchasing any accessories for either the 11 inch or the 13 inch iPad Pro or the iPad Airs, I've curated a list of quality accessories and gears like cases, screen protectors, and things like that. All of them are in the description below. And some of them are affiliate links for your information. And that is it, guys. That's my review of the new M4 iPad Pro. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon so you get notified whenever a new video drops. And also, please leave a comment below. Tell us if you would purchase this iPad or what are the reasons you would skip this. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for joining.